Without much further ado, I'd like to introduce our first uh, keynote speaker coming from Lawrence, Kansas, USA. Um, we all have heard of the Django framework, I assume. Uh, the, the web application framework, web development framework uh, that Guido Van Rossum chose as his favorite. Um, and we're very lucky to have one of its uh, creators here with us today. Um, first keynote speech, please uh, give him a hand, Jacob Kaplan Moss. Thank you, Danny. <clears throat> Welcome, folks. Um, a little bit about me. Um, as Danny said, I'm Jacob Kaplan Moss. I'm one of the lead developers and sort of creators of the Django framework, um, by which I mean I was there, but I wasn't directly involved uh, until the open sourcing effort a few years later. Um, these days, I'm a uh, consultant at a small business, Revolution Systems, that does um, mostly work around uh, uh, deploying Python and, and mostly Django applications. Um, and in fact, I actually haven't written a lot of, um, a lot of websites uh, uh, of late. Um, so when, when Danny asked me to come here and give the web keynote, um, I, I said yes. Uh, but as I, as I sat and thought about it, I realized I'm, I'm becoming less and less qualified to talk about web development directly. Um, my job is much more in the, um, in the, the operations role. Um, and that's, that's, a very, you know, that's a very weird thing for me. I, I spent most of my career trying to get away from being a sysop, being a system administrator. I, I, was, um, I worked at a string of startups uh, for many years, and, and as with most startups, you know, you don't really have the budget for dedicated operations staff, so it kind of falls on whoever knows a little bit about Linux. And that kept being me, and I kept being sort of this, you know, the de facto operations guy, but I never did a good job. I, I always, it was sort of a get in, get out. I, I don't really want to be worrying about, you know, messing around on, on systems and, and, you know, God forbid racking up servers. I'm terrible at that. Um, Malcolm's seen some of my wonderful work in that vicinity. Um, you know, it, and it was never something that I, that I was really particularly good at. So it, it, it's surprised, I think it surprised me as much as it surprised Danny when I sat down and thought more and more about this web talk and discovered that I, I actually wasn't going to talk about the web very much. So I apologize for the bait and switch. Um, Wing's been nice enough to give you all those airplanes, so it, you know, if you want to express displeasure, you can always just chuck one at me. Um, no, actually, I want to talk about something called DevOps. Who's heard, who's heard this term before? All right, so it's catching on a little bit. Um, so like a, like a lot of new, new terms springing up these days, there's a good deal of, of, of BS here, right? Um, HTML5, Ajax, uh, NoSQL, web scale. You know, there's a lot of sort of hype and, and BS and a lot of uh, conflict, conflict in, in, in what these terms actually mean. But I think there's something there um, with, with DevOps. DevOps refers broadly to sort of the, this idea that development and operations are, are merging, are coming together into a combined role of a developer operations engineer, someone who is involved both in the writing of the software and also in the deployment of that software. And, and I, you know, that's, a, that's an important concept. Um, to give you an idea of what I'm talking about with, with DevOps here, um, I want to talk about a sort of an analogy here, and that's the, the DBA. Um, how, how, is anyone here a DBA? Has anyone here been a DBA? Has it, does anyone here work with DBAs? Does it, has anyone here, did anyone here used to work with DBAs? Yeah, see, now that's interesting. Where has the DBA gone? Back when I started with web development, we had these creatures called DBAs, database administrators, and when we wanted to deploy a new website, we would have to go to them and, and, and give them our design, and they would say, 
this is your schema, these are the queries you're allowed to run, these are the stored procedures we're creating for you. And you know, it could take, it could take days to, to, to get a column changed if you, you, know, if you made a mistake. <laughs> so what's happened? Where have, these, where have these DBAs gone? Well, I think what's happened is a, a number, a number of, of, of changes in the way that we do web development came about. First of all, databases just got easier. Um, MySQL, for, for all the complaints I have about it, uh, is remarkably easy to set up. They prioritized ease of use and ease of beginning over pretty much everything. Um, <laughs> SQLite, it's a, an entire database. It does 90%, maybe 95% of what a real database does, and it fits in a single shared library, like 30K. It's ridiculous. You can embed it in your program and have a, a real database right there. Um, and even sort of the, the sort of the big heavies, um, you know, Oracle, uh, MSSQL, started to prioritize sort of ease of use and ease of, of, of startup. Along the same time, you had languages gaining prominence, like PHP, that bundled database bindings just kind of right into the language. It wasn't, a, it wasn't an additional piece you had to bring on. It was just sort of part of the language. And, and simultaneously, and perhaps because of this, um, you had these sort of new frameworks starting to spring up. Um, you know, ORMs have always existed or have existed for quite a long time, but the idea of bundling them with your web framework, the idea that part of the web framework is the ORM, was, was something of a new concept when um, you know, Rails and Django and, and associated frameworks sort of started to, to, to hit the streets 2003, 2004, 2005. This idea that the web developer was the one responsible for the database schema was, was kind of a new one, right? And if you go look at the tutorial for these new, these new fangled web frameworks, you would see that, you know, step one is install, step two is design your schema. This is counter to the idea of working with the DBA, right? The idea that a developer would actually be the one responsible for, um, for developing the schema was sort of a new idea. And what happened was the role of DBA more and more started to get folded into the role of the developer. These days, if you're a web developer and I'm interviewing for you, you for a job, I'm going to ask you questions that historically I might have asked someone interviewing for a DBA job. So in other words, the DBA didn't disappear. That role got folded into what we all have to do as web developers. We all became DBAs. Well, I'm going to argue today that the same thing is happening with operations. Um, Ed Dumble said in, in 2008 that we're all ops people now. I apologize. This link is down right now. Ed apparently is not a particularly good operations uh, person. He can't keep his own blog up. But, um, <laughs> but uh, it's an interesting essay. You can find it on archive.org. And he, his argument is essentially this, the same that I'm making, that, that no, as a developer, we can't, we can't ignore operations. In the same way that we used to sort of ignore the database and go to the DBA and just say, here's what I want to do, you know, you're, it's your problem now. As, as web developers, more and more, we have, to, we have to understand operations. We have to be part of the operations role, and the operations role is part of what we have to do as developers. Put another way, um, I mentioned that now if I'm interviewing a candidate for a web developer, I'm going to be asking them questions about SQL. Uh, in, in a couple of years, I'm going to expect that questions about deployment are going to be pretty much par for the course for anyone interested in getting a, a web development job. You don't necessarily have to be able to you know, write Apache from scratch yourself or be able to talk about the, the details of, of, of platform you know, threading implementations. But you need to under, you'll need to understand things like, like you know, VM stat and how to read memory you know, allocation and how to understand what a threading deadlock is and those sorts of things. In other words, operations is more and more going to become part of what we have to do. The, just like there still are DBAs, right? Big companies still have DBAs. And in the closed source world, you know, Oracle, there are still sort of certified DBAs and those sorts of things. There will continue to be dedicated operations staff at some, at some case, places. But more and more, that role, I, I will argue, 
is going to get folded into what we have to do as developers. So this, coming to this realization um, a few years ago really kind, of, really kind of terrified me. You know, like I said, I was, I was trying to avoid operations. I was doing everything I can to, to, to stay away from it, to, you know, if I needed to touch a server, it was get in, get out, get back to Python. Um, and, and, you know, this, this, I, I imagine that this idea that you all are going to have to learn operations roles if you want to be good web developers, I imagine that that's, that's rather scary. So um, it, the realization that I came to, though, after doing this for a few years, is that, as a matter of fact, there's really nothing new about the role of DevOps. Everything I know about operations, it turns out, was stuff I already knew about being a good developer. Sure, the, the details are different, right? I mean, instead of needing to learn about, you know, Python libraries and PIP and virtual environments and those sorts of things, yeah, you've got to learn details about, you know, threads and processes and fork and daemons and those sorts of things. But, but we're, I mean, we're good at learning details. That's what we do. We're, we're developers. We, we, we're able to absorb lots of little details about about things and, 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 and use them to our advantage. The, but what's really interesting about operations is the more I'm involved in it, the more I realize that the principles and the, um, and, and the sort of the, the, the basics, the tenets that guide what makes a good operations engineer are exactly the same ones that make a good developer. If you want to be take a sort of developer central role of it, you can actually look at, at DevOps as this idea that operation staff is finally learning the rules that we web developers or we developers in general have, have learned years ago. So I'll give you a few quick examples before I sort of dive into the meat of it. Um, things like everything you do goes in source control. We, we know this as developers, right? We know that source control is, is probably the greatest the greatest single tool that we have